in most Western countries, the drugs that are approved for the treatment of RLS are dopamine agonists. Um, uh, these drugs are uh, Pramipexol, Ropinirol, and Rotigotin. Uh, and that applies to most of the Western or the developed countries because the same thing occurs in, in Japan as well. However, uh, in the United States and in Japan, uh, there is an additional drug that is also approved for RLS, which is a, it's a derivative of gabapentin, gabapentin and acarbyl. It's not exactly in there, but it's a pro drug of uh, gabapentin. Okay, um, mm, dopamine agonists are drugs that are very effective for RLS over the short term. However, when you use them, and we're talking here about a, a, a condition that usually lasts a, oh, it's a lifelong disease in many patients, in many, many patients. Uh, I would say at least in two thirds of the patients. So uh, being a long lasting disorder, I mean, drugs that are effective all the first weeks or months, or maybe years at most, uh, are not satisfying satisfying their, the, the, the patient's needs. So that means they're good for the short term, but over the long term, pharmacological tolerance develops. That means, in other words, the drug is no longer a, producing the same effect. Uh, when you see that, when the physician sees that, he or she will have two, two choices. Either just live with that. Um, it's better said when the patient sees that. But, okay, a, either you keep the dose and accept the situation as it is, or you increase the dose. If you increase the dose, uh, the likelihood of creating the so-called dopaminergic augmentation is very high. All dopaminergics produce augmentation. Uh, normally, the term augmentation is very, uh, is, it can be confusing because normally when we talk in medicine about augmentation, we're talking about augmenting the effects of the treatment. That's the way I know it, at least. Here, we should be talking dopaminergic augmentation of symptoms. It's not that the treatment becomes more potent. No, it's that the symptoms become worse. So it's a kind of jatrogenic worsening of symptoms because of the dopaminergic agent. That's something that every dopaminergic agent shares in common. Uh, and the, none of the non-dopaminergic agents have it. It's exclusively specific for dopaminergics. Uh, and, and, and dopaminergic augmentation is a real problem. It's a real problem because patients no longer respond to dopaminergics. Uh, even more, our group also found that uh, during dopaminergic augmentation, the response to non-dopaminergics is also very low. The response to gabapentin and acarbyl is also very low. So the only solution for these patients is opioids, um, uh, mild potency opioids are being used for that um, with all the problems that the opioids might have. Um, so uh, having said this as an introduction, there is there are unmet needs in our release. Uh, there are several lines of research in progress. Part of the problem in RLS is that we do not have uh, we do not have a, a, a very uh, a good understanding of the pathophysiology of RLS. However, new findings over uh, that have been described uh, over the last years are opening new new pathways. First of all, the um, we know that in RLS, uh, patients with RLS have problems in their iron storage. The main storage of iron in the brain, most, pe most people, most doctors do not know that there is any iron in the brain. But okay, having said that, I mean, there is, the main iron storage system in the substantia nigra, which is an area linked to the basal ganglia that regulates movement, regulates inform um, sensory information, and it's also one of the main iron storages in the brain. Um, 
And a number of studies have shown that uh, whenever, there's, uh, whenever there is a reduction in the content of brain iron, RLS will develop. Based on that, uh, new ways of making more iron accessible to the brain uh, and saying it in a simple way, that means intravenous iron uh, has been has become more more common in the for the treatment of RLS. Of course, this is a kind of treatment that requires taking cautions. I personally recommend neurologists to work together or to consult, to let or at least to 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 to, to do it together with um, with a hematologist or an internist or at least with someone that has experience in the administration of IV iron. But this is one of the ways of uh, uh, of improving the disorder. I, IV iron would be one of the ways. The other one is that we know that this brain iron deficiency in RLS produces uh, some problems in several neurotransmitters. One of them is um, a glut a glutamate. Patients with RLS are undergoing a hyperglutamatergic effect a, a state. Uh, glutamate is overacting in particularly in the cortico stratal pathways. And that leads to the symptoms. Uh, this is the reason why alpha-2 delta ligands, alpha-2 delta ligands is a way of, of nominating, of, of, of calling um, pregabalin and gabapentin. So gabapentinoid drugs, what they basically do is they reduce uh, the glutamatergic function. This is their main mechanism of action in RLS. And these drugs are, are, are effective for RLS. So that means pregabalin and in, 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 in gabapentin. And also in the United States, gabapentin and acarbil. Okay, uh, the other, another drug that might be useful, uh, although it requires far longer clinical development, could be perampanel. Perampanel, it's a phycompa, uh, it's a trade name. Uh, a perampanel is a drug, it's an AMPA receptor antagonist. And the study of our group also showed that it could be, it, it reduced uh, RLS symptoms as well. And finally, the main finding over the last year, years has been uh, that adenosine, which is a neurotransmitter that normally antagonizes glutamate, it, it's one of the main uh, factors leading to sleepiness at night. I mean, uh, during wake time, there is usually an accumulation of uh, adenosine in the intercellular space. And that's somehow the signal that the sleep centers and take for initiating the sleep process. Okay, um, adenosine is low in, in, in RLS. Uh, we also know that it has something, why is it low? It has something to do with the, um, low, with the brain iron deficiency. The brain iron deficiency, uh, at least in animal models, leads to a downregulation of the adenosine A1 receptor and then that leads to low adenosine low adenosine would um, unleash or it would disinhibit glutamate and that would lead to the symptoms uh, what does it mean in terms of clinical development for now what we know is that a drug that reduces well, that increases intra in intercellular um, adenosine which is dipyridamol it's a drug that, an old drug, an anti-aggregant, that one of the effects it has is that it blocks the reuptake of, um, in, of adenosine. And by doing that, it increases intercellular, um, intercellular and, uh, adenosine. And by doing that, ultimately what it will do, it, it will reduce glutamatergic function. So there are a number of new drugs in the horizon and um, that uh, this 
drugs might change in a few years the way RLS is being treated 